Hi, this is Michael from Pop Spectrum. And this is Robert from Pop Spectrum and Anime America Podcast. And we just got back from... Say my name. We called him... Godzilla. 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 This was, this was, it went a little bit different than we expected it to because they played about the first, what was it, 15, 10, 15 minutes of the movie. Oh my god. And then the entire theater, not just our theater, the entire theater, all their theaters had a huge power outage and it we were just left there listening to the movie. We're like, stop the audio! Stop it! No spoilers! People are screaming in the audience. We're like, la 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 la. And they pulled, uh, they pulled the Sopranos finale on us, <laughs> just with audio. And uh, so, Robin gets up to go and visit a friend of ours. <laughs> and I think I'll let you talk about this. Okay, so we got separated from our friends, and I, when the screen went black, and I was just like, well, where's, where's the other parties? I went up to go find them, and at the time, I found them. All of a sudden, we look at the screen, and <laughs> some go- somebody did shadow puppets of Godzilla, and another guy going, ah! I th- it looked like a girl. I don't know, but we're like Godzilla, <laughs> and the entire audience just freaks out, and it's a mixture of like applaud, applauding, and like people screaming, <laughs> because this was like maybe ten minutes after the movie stopped, and everyone was we're just, just waiting. <laughs> And everyone was so desensitized by that point that it was just like, yay, something's happening. Godzilla! <laughs> We're like, yes! Yes! I posted on my Facebook status, this is the best Godzilla moment ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Godzilla Shadow Puppets. <laughs> and, like, half the audience walked out, and I mean, some of them came back, but it was... It was a pretty, uh, it was an interesting start to movie. That hasn't happened to me before. <laughs> it, was, it was fun. And it kept stopping and freezing at this one. Yeah, a shot of Aaron Taylor Johnson uh, from Kick-Ass. It's like, I, and it kept popping. I'm like, dirt face. Yeah, it was just kind of funny, the actual frame that it had. You know, it could have been any other frame, but it's just this really awkward shot of Aaron Taylor Johnson. Anyways, now about the actual movie. <laughs> now the um, feature presentation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because uh, eventually they did get it up and running, and they gave us free movie tickets, so that made it worth it. Oh, you have yours? Julia has mine, because I knew I was going to lose it. Here's mine, here's mine. Ta-da! Yeah. Is it? That's upside down. Oh, Yay! well. <laughs> Godzilla! <laughs> What was, the, what was the Japanese guy? Ken? Uh, Ken Watanabe is the name of the actor. I don't know the name of the character. Ken, Ken but... Watanabe, like, he was the first guy to actually say Godzilla in the movie. We're like, yes! Koshira. Because we're like, if anybody else was going to call his name, it has to be a Japanese guy. I was so excited when I heard Brian Cranston was going to be in this movie, and then it turned <laughs> out he wasn't in nearly as much of it as I thought he was going to be. And then we just followed Aaron Taylor Johnson around the entire movie. But, Be- like, it, it, he has, like, these really epic lines in the trailer where he's like, um, I want to talk to somebody in charge. You are not fooling anybody when you say that what happened was a natural disaster. You're lying. It was not an earthquake. It wasn't a typhoon. Because what's really happening is that you're hiding something out there. And it is going to send us back to the Stone Age. It's super dramatic and everything. And then you barely hear it in the actual movie. He's like in a, off in a little side room. So, I, you know, at least they got to use it for something. But yeah. like, and then he's he does a few things. and He's, he's in the third of the movie. Like he's yeah. in the first third. <laughs> 
are adding spoilers to this. If you haven't um, seen Godzilla, you may not want to watch this video. It starts out and it has these... Uh, the, the opening credits are actually kind of interesting because they show a bunch of... Uh, they footage. show why Hiroshima happened. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think this was actually all that related to Hiroshima. I thought that it was like... Because he said 1945, Hiroshima. Mm -hmm. And then he said 1954 was when they saw it the first time. So I think... I, I don't think this was... Consistency. <laughs> I, I, I don't think this was... Actually, that that's kind of funny. And that's definitely a reference because the original Godzilla was either 1954 or 1956. So that was definitely a reference to when that came out. Mm -hmm. um, which I have not seen. I don't know if you've seen it. The original no. 1950. Okay. I need to see it now. <laughs> but like they had all these shots... Um, of like nuclear tests in the Pacific and Pacific uh, Ocean. And the idea was that originally they were, you know, in real life they're supposed to be tests. But the idea in the movie is that they were trying to kill Gojira, Godzilla. Godzilla. Are we gonna call it Gojira or Godzilla? Let's just do Godzilla. We're okay. gonna we're gonna be racist. <laughs> we're not gonna be racist. <laughs> I walked into this theater not knowing that Brian Cranston and Aaron Tyler Johnson were in this movie. So it's like Breaking Bad plus Kick-Ass plus Godzilla. <laughs> Win. That was the whole reason I wanted to see the movie. Because I'd seen all the trailers and I was like, is that Brian Cranston in Godzilla? <laughs> I was like, Look, What is going on here? It took me a while. I'm like, that's Brian Cranston. I was like, yeah. That is Brian Cranston. <laughs> and your friend actually thought that the main character was Shia LaBeouf. <sighs> yeah, that was... Uh... That was my friend Alex that was with us. <laughs> like um, face palm, like no, Hollywood that is knows not better. Not Shia LaBeouf. Ho Hollywood knows better now. <laughs> they already put him in one movie with giant things. Yep, we <laughs> can't say giant monster then giant robots. I was gonna say giant things, and there's no giant robots in this, so. Nope. And uh, so, it was. Uh... Oh, I'm awful today. Um, well, it's like 1 a.m. Shh. I'm tired. He comes home from his military services. He's okay. Kinda... And, uh, his, and his wife is played by Elizabeth Olsen, who I believe is the sister to Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen. Yay, you have attention now. I remember you, Elizabeth, from the Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen videos where uh, they were off you know solving mysteries and they're gonna go to their first mystery which is a ghost in a house and you're like can i come with you guys and they told you in a song to butt out so yeah I, i'm sure she's done other acting before now i mean i think she's also in uh she's gonna be in the next avengers movie or something um good for her like she pursued acting i think her sisters are in fashion i think she's playing uh I, I can't remember. She's, she's playing a mutant character. Um, nice. Actually, Brian Cranston is the conspiracy theorist old man. <laughs> he convinces his son to go back with him. And this is actually where I thought that the director actually came into play. Because the director is uh, Gareth Edwards. And he, uh, previously before this, directed a movie called Monsters. Um, which is actually, in my opinion, his test run before they gave him Godzilla because it was a independent film that he did special effects for like entirely in a basic editing program. This is like the next project he's done after that and it's clearly he has a much bigger budget now. There was also a bunch of, uh, a, a clear homage to that film, I think. I mean, obviously they were wearing gas masks when they went into the quarantine zone, but it's actually very reminiscent of uh, some shots from Monsters and I was, I was reminded definitely of that. So I think that was a straight homage to his previous film. I have one question. Okay. There was, uh, when uh, Aaron Taylor's character went to the, the police station to get his dad out of jail, there was one um, kid that was being released from the prison. Yeah. The were there. My question is, my question is, was that a guy or a girl? <laughs> yeah, we weren't Japan, quite sure. Japan is the land of traps. We never know. I mean, like, it, they had, like, they were wearing, like, boyish gangster clothes, but that could have been a female Yakuza. We don't know. <laughs> Spiked up hair, but still pretty eyes. <laughs> yeah, because in, in the middle of the movie, we were looking, and, like, I, I looked back to my girlfriend, and I was like, is that, is that a girl? <laughs> I asked Alex that. I'm like, I'm like, guy or girl? 
<laughs> I made I made your friend laugh throughout the whole movie. <laughs> this actually takes a while to get started. Like you would think that you're gonna see this creature probably like half an hour in the film, but it it probably takes like an hour uh, for anything to happen. And not that it's boring, but like. And, and they, they get to this egg, and you think, like, oh, this is Godzilla. And they're and it's going to come out of there, and then that's going to be when it's going to start attacking. And this is still in uh, Zhangjir, Japan. And um, and they, they have all this build up and it's, and it's going to come out, and they're like, oh, wait, Brian Cranston was right. <laughs> and because, like, he says, you know, he has all those lines from the trailer where he says, it's going to send us back to the Stone Age. And, and it is going to send us back to the Stone Age. Sure, but these but... aren't tremors. These are... Electromagnetic pulses? Or... Yes. That's what he said. So the egg opens up and they like they try to blow it up. But then what they ended up calling Muto came out of it. Um, I'm not sure if this is a creature from the previous Godzilla films in Japan or if this is an entirely new creation. Um, I, it, I know my they, guess is they it's classified it as mega unidentified... Uh, terrorizing massive family. unidentified terrestrial organism yes i think it was massive but something like that um, Mega or massive massive sounds funnier <laughs> and now this giant muto i'm gonna make a, a princess tutu reference to that muto well and okay this is what i was gonna say earlier is that um it's just like given that i'd I've only previous i've never seen neither of you <laughs> um, at least i know some before I didn't I, know Godzilla. I, I didn't know Godzilla was going to have a fucking Kamehameha wave coming out of its mouth. I okay? knew that part. I'm like, I was waiting for that. <laughs> I just haven't seen the first one. I've seen like the other ones that come out of Japan. That mm -hmm. they've made recent ones, like when the Japanese Godzilla killed the American Godzilla in two seconds. It was basically the American Godzilla tripping over itself. Mm -hmm. But I've seen those. But I just never saw the first Godzilla. Brian Cranston dies. No, no, Mr. White, Mr. White. Yeah, Mr. White. Then a lot of my interest in the movie dropped significantly, but. <laughs> That's how it felt in the second. I mean, it's like film. then we were just left with Kickass, and I was like, Kickass okay. and a lot of military stuff. Yeah. Like, join, join the military. You might fight Godzilla. And I mean, there's one key distinction here. I mean. And this is one thing that this movie definitely gets right in comparison to the 1998 Godzilla is, for one thing, Godzilla is not a T-Rex. Nope. Okay. Second thing is Godzilla is not evil. Godzilla is not trying to destroy humanity mm -hmm. because besides some collateral damage, Godzilla does not attack people nope. like ever in the entire movie. Um, He'll stare you'll be all like, what's up? Eventually, as Muto starts attacking, it just seems like it's following Aaron Taylor Johnson because wherever he goes, it goes. But I mean, it's I know it's, it's, heading, it's heading towards Nevada. I, I know it's heading towards Nevada in the end to get to the other Muto because there's, there's, a, there's a female Muto. Because there's a second Muto. I mean, they, 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 they allude to it in the beginning. It doesn't come out of nowhere mm -hmm. because you see that there's the one that escaped and there's the one that is still dormant. Suddenly, Godzilla comes out of the water. You don't see it at all for Here, like that was my main concern at first was Mut muto made it to honolulu and it was trying to make its way to the other muto and just wrecking shit as it went and that's when godzilla rose up to try to stop him and that's the first time we're able to see godzilla and right as godzilla screams they cut away to the little boy <laughs> To Aaron Tyler's little... To Aaron Taylor kid. Johnson and he, he, the, the little Asian boy he was trying to say. Because <laughs> that, that became more That important. and also, uh, it, it was his son. He was watching the TV and his mom was like, Turn off TV, sweetie. He's like, Mommy, dinosaurs. <laughs> like, no, I don't want to <laughs> see this. I want to see Godzilla versus Muto. Yeah, that, that was kind of the funny contrast between the children and the adults in this movie. Is that anyone under the age of 12 in this movie was like... Oh look, dinosaur or, or something, and like everyone else is like, get the fuck out. <laughs> That's what um, all kids be like. Look at that. That's what all kids do. Mm -hmm. it, it it did kind of bother me that some of this movie was PG thirteen. There's so many points when there were lines that just seemed a little bit out of place. There's one point where they're on a bridge later in the movie. It's either Aaron Taylor Johnson or the soldier that's with him is like, hit the deck as they as they fall to the bridge as they're avoiding Muto, and it's like. 
who would say that? Who says that at a time like this? I mean, the, if anything, it's, just, if anything, it seems like an outdated statement. Either jump, either just jump down. Yeah, that too. It's like, but get down. Because this isn't. They can't even argue that this is set in previous times. They specifically told us this is 2014. 2014. This is 2014. Or 15 years later. So, you know, from 1999. 1999, do your math. So, I mean, if you're going to use a phrase like that, I mean, and it it just came off as a little bit strange. Another point when we were in Honolulu that was hilarious, they zoomed in on a guan and I went, Godzilla! (laughs) I I think that was definitely on purpose, because, like, you're suddenly looking at it super close up, and then it's just scurrying away. It's it's just an iguana, like... Really? (laughs) We're just looking at an iguana, I just went, Godzilla! (laughs) <laughs> so when Godzilla first appears and there's like a tidal wave, suddenly, for whatever reason, we're following a dog. Mm-hmm. I don't know why we're following, following a dog, dog, but we're following... following a dog. And the dog is tied to the tree and you're thinking, oh no, Puppy. the dog's about to Puppy. get murdered. Puppy. And then suddenly, for whatever reason, the dog is running free and we're following the dog still. And then we follow the dog to the people. and that... <laughs> I'm just like trying to yell at this movie, movie. Focus. And, and there then, are giant monsters in the background, <laughs> and we're watching a dog running for his life and humanity trying to take cover. Monsters! Well, I mean, I think the, the idea was not only were we seeing it from the people's perspective, but also I think they didn't want to necessarily show it all right away because we do get to see it all at the end. It's not like they never showed it. They did show it. That's just it. The first two thirds of the movie, you're like, come on. It's one thing I want to point out. That shot of uh, like Godzilla first coming out and he's about to take on uh, Muto. All of a sudden, it just goes to that one shot of the kid. How? The, and then all of a sudden, it's the next day. The little Asian boy gets reunited with his family. It's like, okay, how did Muto escape? Why are the submarines now following Godzilla as if Godzilla's their best friend now? <laughs> I don't get it. Why aren't you trying to kill it? it Why like, is it, it just... It felt like any moment Godzilla can come up, I'm gonna play boats. So eventually, they all end up in the same place, and... San Francisco. Yeah, because they, they're all converging... <laughs> they're all conveniently converging where Aaron Taylor Johnson's wife is, where Elizabeth Olsen is, and... <laughs> yep. For, like, you know, just because she lives there. Just okay. Be, just because. So, obviously, the exact place that he's trying to get to is... Where all the carnage is happening. Yeah. I love how, like, they had to, like, blatantly state at the very beginning of the movie that he, uh, that he defuses bombs. Like, they had to obviously state it to yeah, the it, world. Yeah, it's, it's kind of funny. They stated it, like, three or four times in the movie. He, he works with bombs. He works with bombs. He works with bombs. Just so like, the audience hmm, doesn't... What's he gonna do? What's he gonna do He's gonna movie? try to stop a bomb. It's like, yeah, that, that felt a little bit like too much audience so hand-holding. What's he gonna do? I mean, uh, yeah, okay, I definitely remembered it, but it's like you didn't need to do it that many times. Mm-hmm. Okay, so one of the things I want to talk about is uh, they're, they're getting to the point where uh, Godzilla's approaching San Francisco and they're driving across the bridge and suddenly... This bus driver is just like, I'm gonna get through this bridge, but it's the last thing I do. Like, where where did you come from, bus driver, and why are you so? Hail to the bus driver. I mean, I get it. He's trying to driver, save the kids, but driver. it's just like, he, he suddenly had this attitude change where he I'm was just like, I'm gonna get the yes. frack out. I'm getting out of here. And this kid is screaming his ass off in the bus, and it's like, it's like, what what kid actor did that? That laugh was that scream was horrifying. I think the whole theater laughed when that bird hit the window. The seagull say, we're like, tension. Bam! We're like, whoa! <laughs> the male Muto wanted to get with the female Muto so they can lay their eggs. Yeah, that female Muto was a bit disturbing. There's this shot when you can see it going from behind, and you can see all the babies in its little sack. We're like, and Yay! I was like, Yay! She had balls. Lots of them. She had lots of balls. Yeah, that that was also the bit of strange because it was like, it's a female, but Mm -hmm. it has like baby Muto testicles. Yep. And there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Mutos have a lot of balls. Yeah. Near the end of the movie, we do actually finally get to start like, they, it's no longer, like, all the different little camera... You know, those camera views are interesting, but at some point you're just like, I, I want to fucking... I want to fucking see this thing. Exactly. Like, we're just like, okay, camera, monsters, focus. And, I mean, it does... Focus. It does make it worth it that they hold off, because otherwise I feel like 
It would have been too much. No, it would have been like, okay, we've seen it already, so the ending isn't nearly as impressive. Yeah. I mean, that that's the thing that it gets right about that. I mean, it is a little bit strange that in a movie about Godzilla, he's barely in it. Mm-hmm. But... Um, not not barely, but, but he's it's like subtle. He's 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 in like a third of the movie. Well, and there, there's even this one point, and it, it it felt to me like from the way you're describing, it's like it was a reaction to what you were wanting because at one point Kim Wan was like, "Let them fight." Exactly. We're like, <laughs> "Do it, do it." And your reaction to the fight? Uh, <laughs> it. I was. I did not expect the giant Kamehameha wave out of, out of Godzilla's <laughs> mouth. I was like, "Huh, okay." I it's didn't just, see that coming. It's just when you thought Godzilla was down for the count, because he's fighting two Mutos at once, and he's uh, just like, <sighs> "We're with the right audience," because all of us are just like, "Yeah!" Well, and it doesn't help that this audience was already extremely displeased, given that you know we had but we had a puppet show. But we, <laughs> given that we were delayed like an hour, um, yeah. because I mean, start it was supposed to start at eight, and the actual movie once we started up again, it was like nine o'clock. Yep. Just when you thought it couldn't get more badass, Ford was able to get the boat sailing, but the energy shuts down again, or the electricity shuts down again, and just when. Yeah, it's just like it, it, he, he he takes out his pistol and he's like, we're like yeah, Aw. this is gonna work. <laughs> we're just looking at that like, oh, so cute. <laughs> and that's pretty much the Mama Muto's expression. And just when she's about to dive in for the kill, some Godzilla just like takes her. Yeah, just holds like, his holds his head, looks down, and is like, <laughs> got me, got me, ah! <laughs> that, Yeah, that should be a T-shirt. Goku going. <sighs> Or I'm a fire and my laser. <laughs> All of us are just like, whoa! Because I mean, we'd already seen it before, but it was like just such a random badass moment. <laughs> just like that moment at King Kong, that King Kong remake where it takes the T Rex and just splits its mouth yeah. open. Better. It's like <laughs> takes Mama Muto's mouth going ah. And, and then basically rips its head off. And, and then, like, just tosses it aside and then passes out. We're like, Godzilla! Godzilla! And it breaks up and it does one more massive scream. And they, they have the original Godzilla scream. It's definitely the... I mean, I, I can't imitate it at all. To be honest, I kind of want the next one to kind of be, like, Godzilla versus Pacific Rim. <laughs> Can they just combine those two studios and just do it for the hell of it? (laughs) I I feel like that's like a no-brainer at this point. Like, the two kaiju movies that came out within a year of each other. Yeah. (laughs) So, I mean, and The Alien vs. Predator, Frey vs. Jason, Godzilla Yeah, exactly. That's (laughs) perfect. Godzilla vs. Pacific. Because, to be honest, I mean... The Muto wasn't so different from the creatures in Pacific Rim. I mean, actually, the thing it reminded me of the most was the thing from uh, Cloverfield. Have you seen Cloverfield? Shaky cam made me sick. <laughs> but that, that creature actually reminds me a lot of the Cloverfield creature. I mean, I, I have to go back and look at the differences, but I mean, they, they, they have a similar structure. Um, mm-hmm. the, the face is different, but uh, the, the way that it's built and the way it walks around reminded me a lot of that. Except the, the Cloverfield creature is more like a spider, but... The first third of the movie was just Brian Cranston saying, yay! The second third was join the military because it's awesome. And you might fight giant monsters. It's a lie. It's a, That's a trap. And the final third was what you Go actually down! came to see. <laughs> it, um, was ex- it was everything you wanted. So that I would definitely say... Go and see it as long as you don't mind waiting a little bit longer for what you came for. <laughs> Definitely, if you're a Godzilla fan, go and see it. Or even if you're, you're a fan. Even if you're not, it's it's awesome. This is Michael from Pop Spectrum. And this is Robin from Pop Spectrum and Anime America Podcast. <laughs> Double advertising.